Welcome inside lovely Wrigley Field. I'm Dan Hope, joined by Andy Anders for After Carmen, 11 Warriors official post-game show after the Buckeyes 31-7 win over the Northwestern Wildcats. And Andy, it may have technically been a road game for Ohio State today, but it sure felt like a home game because there were Buckeye fans everywhere in this stadium. Yeah, I'd say 80-20, uh, pretty heavy Ohio State presence here. And I, the players definitely felt that, talked about that after the game. Uh, and it was a pretty fun environment, really. They were hyping up the crowd. They were interacting. Uh, crowd got into it at a, at a few moments. I, I This was just an amazing atmosphere for a game, the friendly confines. As for the game itself, you know, it was kind of similar to Purdue last week. I felt a little methodical win for Ohio State, right? Took control as it progressed. Defense started really slow. Figured some things out as the game went on. Although, you know, I think maybe cornerbacks are a little more of a concern still for Ohio State than we thought coming into the year. However, responded well, took control in the middle eight as Ryan Day has preached all season really, and uh, ended up winning comfortably here on the road and you stay undefeated in November. Yeah, I mean, two drives into the game, Northwestern had 150 yards and took a seven nothing lead and you're kind of like, what's going on? But Northwestern ended up finishing the game with only like 251 yards, I believe. So ultimately Ohio State still held Northwestern's offense under its season average. Ohio State's offense, I think it felt like a slower start than it actually was because the Buckeyes only had one drive in the first quarter. So it was the first time all year that the Buckeyes didn't score a first quarter touchdown, but they then proceeded to score touchdowns on each of their four next drives, followed that with a field goal. So five straight scoring drives, 31 unanswered points, which would end up being all the points Ohio State would need in this 31-7 to win. I think certainly the highlight of the game, probably for everybody, was seeing Carnell Tate score two touchdowns because we knew this game was going to mean a lot to Carnell, a Chicago native. His mother tragically killed here uh, last summer. Uh, you know, he's someone, as Ryan Day says, he's not someone who's necessarily someone who talks a lot about himself, talks a lot about his emotions, but he had over 25 family members here in attendance today. It really meant a lot for him to have a big day. I think there was a concerted effort for Ohio State to make sure he had opportunities to make plays in this game, and he delivered. He had two spectacular diving catches in the first half, mm -hmm. one of which went for a touchdown, and then he finished off Ohio State's opening drive of the second half with another score. Honestly thought that first diving catch was the most impressive one. He had two defenders on him, one of them directly contesting the ball as he went to the ground, and still, like, we heard in the offseason – Brian Hartline say Carnell might have the strongest hands on the team. It kind of showed on that play. But, you know, off the field, I was talking with another person on the beat earlier in the week, and she had mentioned that, you know, you never see Carnell. He's always carrying a smile. Despite the tragedy he's experienced in his life, he's someone who brings such a joy, uh, I think, to this locker room and just to – being around people and so you just you love to see this for Carnell to have a nice big day in front of his hometown in front of his friends and family uh, so just that was that's definitely the number one storyline I think from this game that you love I, I think the other on the flip side of the ball Sonny Styles has really come on these last few weeks and I thought this was his best game yet maybe period at any position whether it's last year or this year but definitely at linebacker. Two sacks and two pass breakups, Dan. That's a pretty rare combo for any position, but a linebacker especially, getting involved in breaking up a play, but also was ferocious on the blitz today. And where we saw him overrun quarterbacks earlier in the season was able to finish plays. I thought that was the big difference for him, and Ryan Day talked about that in his post-game press conference too. Jack Sawyer, yes, may have missed on a couple opportunities to get a sack for himself. Kind of linked up with Sonny on one of Sonny's sacks, although he doesn't get credit for the half because Jack Lausch ultimately slipped from his grasp right before Sonny took him down. But career-high seven tackles. He's been an excellent run defender, I think, really the last two seasons, and that was really prevalent today, but still had three quarterback hits, got great pressure, forced Lausch off his spots multiple times. Um, and so, like we saw last year, Jack Sawyer kind of coming on in the second half of this season. So despite the slow start, there were definitely some positives, too, to take away from And don't the forget, Jack play. also had a forced fumble on that first yes. drive. Which, you know, that could have been two, dry, two scoring drives in a row. Northwestern potentially takes a two-score lead early in the game if Jack Sawyer doesn't force that fumble, which Davis and Igmanosin recovered. So I think, yeah, two really good games in a row for Jack. You know, two really good games in a row for Sonny. I, we talked about it on Real Pod Wednesdays. It was kind of a 
quietly really good game for him against uh, Purdue, but nothing quiet about today. I think Arvell Reese, another guy who deserves some credit, he, taught, yep. he also had his career high of seven tackles. C.J. Hicks is a mm -hmm. guy that uh, we saw him late in the game. They were using him as a blitzer, and he got, uh, I don't think he, he only got credit for half a sack, but it looked to me like he had two sacks. Right. He was at least in on two sacks, and so he did a great job as a pass rusher there late in the game for the Buckeyes. Flipping back to the offensive side of the ball, certainly another big day for Jeremiah Smith. Mm -hmm. Got exactly 100 yards, had a nice 68-yard uh, catch and run. I know there was some concern from Ohio State fans about uh, his ankle, but he was able to come back into the game, appeared to be fine. Uh, you know, I know probably some people a little bit upset about the way uh, Northwestern's uh, defender uh, tackled him there on that play, but fortunately, Jeremiah avoiding uh, serious injury on that one. Quinshawn Judkins, productive day for him as well. Uh, two touchdown runs. I know he had over 70 yards. Don't remember the exact number, but a good day in which I think another one of those days of a run game where we kind of saw as the game progressed, they got better and better running the ball and were ultimately able to take control of the game. Yeah, keep pounding, man. And, and against a good run defense, it's, that's the one strength Northwestern has had consistently this season is they've been a good run defending team. And so really taking advantage of the fact you can wear on teams. And in the fourth quarter, I thought, is when Ohio State was really breaking its biggest runs, even though they didn't ultimately score in the fourth quarter. Um, and even in the third quarter, really the second half, they were running the football pretty well. Travion Henderson, along with Quinshawn Judkins, I thought showed great vision. Quinshawn had a great play early in the game where he just ran over a guy on a third and two, knocked him completely to the ground and kept going. That was pretty fun. Travion hurdled somebody in the second half, although only fell forward for like an extra yard or two, it was still an exciting play. And so these backs are elite. We know that already. The offensive line clicked as the game went on. I think early there were some hiccups, both in the run and pass game, some pressure on Will Howard. Clicked as the game went on. Uh, I think overall it was a really strong offensive performance for Ohio State, but limited possessions kind of similar to last week against Purdue, where maybe if they had you know, more meaningful possessions, this ends up being higher scoring for them. Well, comfortable victory again for Ohio State today. Next week, the competition gets tougher again. The third top five showdown of the season as the Buckeyes will put their 9-1 and record to the test against 10-0 and Indiana, a game that we didn't necessarily expect coming into the year was going to be one of Ohio State's marquee games of the season, but it's certainly going to be next week. Lots more coverage coming on 11warriors.com as we prepare for the Buckeyes versus Hoosiers. For now... That's been after Carmen here from Wrigley Field. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon.